Hello, and welcome back to another War Thunder video, where today's video is going to be about the Stutzwagen 103, or more commonly known as the S-Tank. So the STRV 103 is a Swedish main battle tank, and in-game it's called a, oh, it's referred to as a medium tank. And you can see I get an interesting spawn here on top of that forklift. But anyway, this tank, it features a hydro pneumatic suspension, which means that it has to turn its hull and elevate and depress its hull in order to elevate and depress its gun, as you can see here. And it has two engines, one for hull aiming, one for just going at faster speeds. As you can see here, I'm topping speeds of about 40 kilometers per hour, but note that this is on open road, so it's normally very hard to reach the speed on like grassy terrain or muddy terrain but you should sometimes you can do it on grassy terrain if you're going in a completely straight line but you could see I'm turning a lot so I lose a lot of speed from turning but this tank it features a 105 millimeter gun and it also has some very good armor this tank it has 40 millimeters of armor in game on the frontal main hull that is angled at 75 to 80 degrees. It also has 30 millimeters on the side and I'm pretty sure on the back as well. On the upper side it has an extra 10 millimeters as well. So you could see that its armor, its side armor is very weak but its frontal armor is very good since it's angled. Also, the engines and the suspension protect the crew from any shots that penetrate through the hull. This tank can also be managed by one crew member, since the commander has his own controls and the driver and gunner sit right next to each other. So this tank can be managed by one crew member, which is a very good. So I'm, I'm pretty sure the only tank that can be managed with only one crew member. So here you see me, I take down an AMX and this T-54 comes up and wants to brawl with me. But he gets scared and shoots me in a place where he can't penetrate. Many people get scared of this tank once they see it, because this is apparently the scariest pancake they've ever seen. So they panic when they shoot and they shoot in places where they cannot penetrate. But anyway, on its 105mm gun, it has two kinds of armor-piercing discarding sabot shells. One's better on angled armor but has less overall penetration, and one has more overall penetration but is less on angled armor, so I recommend that you use the ones with the higher penetration overall since they have 296 millimeters of penetration at 500 meters which is a lot and the other kinds are not as good even though they have better penetration than angled armor. So I get lit on fire and I quickly take, I have to take these guys out before I put out the fire so I quickly take out the AMX and I have to go after this 254. Now I get rid of his driver and engine with the very fast 4 second reload depending on your crew. I'm pretty sure that's with like a full best crew, but I don't have that on my tank so it takes a little longer. But anyway, it's a very fast reload and I take out the T-54. So these armor piercing sabot shells, they don't have any explosive filler in them. So if you're aiming for the turret only on the enemy, it's quite hard to kill them. But now you see I re go back to cover it and repair my suspension. So historically this tank was used with the British Centurion since the Swedish army wanted a better defensive tank to ambush any enemies trying to attack Sweden. So they came up 
with the STR V103. There were some heavy tank designs before it, but those were a bit too expensive and the Swedish army wanted something cheaper. So, this tank, it also had a flotation screen to go into water and could move 6 kilometers per hour underwater with using only its tracks. This tank, it the flotation screen, it could go up in less than 20 minutes, so it's it could go up pretty fast. And then this tank could be fully submersible. So you could see right here, I tried to shoot this ARL in the turret. I shoot him multiple times and I'm not able to do too much damage. But I finally almost get rid of his cannon breach, but it's damaged enough that he can't use it anymore. And I'm just trying to kill his turret crew. But all you can see I'm getting is the cannon breach. So he backs away and I back away as well so I don't get shot by any of his teammates. But this tank it also features a, well not this model, but other models featured a bulldozer scoop, which they used to go into hull down engagements, since it could dig a hole if it didn't have a ridge line around it. So it dug holes and then the tank was very hidden and very protected from, since it's it's, it's well hidden and and its armor performs best hull down so you can see in the replay I get killed by this M56 but I use my backup and go back into battle so other models of this tank also featured a m machine gun next to the Coppola and pretty much all of the models have two machine guns on the right of the tank if you look from the front so the bulldozer scoop it really helped with the tank it also could have been used as armor when retracted since it's a pretty thick scoop and you, they could use it for armor to protect the lower plate in game the lower plate it has as much pen it has as much armor as the upper plate so you don't have to worry too much about enemies shooting at your lower plate. Unless you angle your tank up, I'm pretty sure that it makes the lower plate less angled. But anyway, now I'm going to go back to battle with the somewhat fast speed that this tank has. Sometimes it's called sluggish, sometimes not. But about the battle rating, I'm pretty sh If they fix the battle rating, I'm pretty sure that this tank will work quite well. Right now, it's the only reason it's a bad sniper is because of the hull aiming, and they should really fix that. I don't think that they should move it up to 8.0 without giving it any buffs, since the armor won't be too good there, and this tank, one of its very important features is its armor. So it's a very unique tank. I think it's very well designed. And another interesting thing about it is all of its ammunition is stored in the back. This makes the tank much more survivable since its armor is almost always facing towards its opponent. So your front is almost face always facing towards its opponent. So it its back is always really protected. And since enemies aren't it's very hard to get the crew from the front unless you have like missiles or something but it's very hard to explode the ammunition unless you shoot it from the back so you have to watch out when you get ambushed but overall it's a very good it's very good protection of the ammunition and a very good design so right now I just lock down this T 25 for my team. I can't really kill him so I just keep lighting him on fire and eventually my teammate
gets rid of him. So, this tank, it was used from about the 1960s to the 1990s. It was supposed, later models were supposed to have reactive armor, they thought about adding it, but then the Swedish army, they found the Leopard 2 more appealing, so they decided to use that instead of the STRV-103. So, they switched to the Leopard tank, and that was pretty much the end of this tank. But, it would have served well for its time, and it's, it's a very good defensive tank, and it was used for ambushing, which makes sure that pretty much the enemies are always going to be in front of you, so the armor will hold up. So, other models in game, there's the SCRV-103C. It has a heat shield in front of the gun, well, it, in front of the hull, which it used to protect the tank against some heat, which does help a bit, but it won't always protect against heat. So it, the heat shield it protects the tank quite a bit. So it's a very well-designed tank in my opinion. Very good defensive tank. And it's very unique. And about where you should use the tank. Like I said, you should always use it as a sniper. You could, you can use it as a brawler when forced. But I like to use it as a, at this point in of the game where the hull aiming is still not fully fixed. I like to use it as a medium range support tank. And in this replay, you can see that I use the medium range support role quite well. But when the tank is fixed, it will be a good sniper. And if you like the sniper play style, this tank is a good tank for you. But if you prefer the glass cannon or fast moving glass cannon playstyle, you should probably go for the rank 6 tank. But this tank, it's not bad. It's pretty good for its battle rating, and the only thing really holding it back is its hull aiming problems. It doesn't look too bad in this replay, but in reality it's much, much worse when you're on hull, when you're on ridge lines, which they should really fix because realistically this tank was used on ridge ridges and if they don't fix that then that makes it pretty unrealistic for this tank. But this tank it still performs well even with the even with it still having some problems. But I say that it performs well. Not every round you will have like this one. Only some rounds where you are very sneaky. You have to be very sneaky with this tank. Again, you have to be a sneaky Swede and... But in brawling situations, many people panic because of the scary pancake. And it's, a, it's good at scaring people once they're in front of you and they panic and they shoot in places where they cannot penetrate. When enemies penetrate the cupola of this tank, it usually just kills the commander, but that's going to be about the end of the video. If you enjoyed, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.